हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ईसी एकेडमी In this lecture, let us understand the properties of Z transform. In your syllabus, only the statement is there; no derivation is prescribed in the syllabus. That's why you need to remember only the statement for different properties of Z transform. The first property is linearity property. In this property, if we take a signal x one of n, which is multiplied by constant a one, then the z transform of that signal will be x1 of z which will be multiplied with same constant and if we take one more signal which is x2 of n which is multiplied with constant a2 the z transform of this signal will be x2 of z which is multiplied by same constant a2 now if we take the addition of these two signals with constant multiplied with this signal the overall z transform will be addition of these two z transform this property is known as linearity property the significance of this property is that it simplifies the z transform of composite signal by breaking down into smaller components the next property is time shift property this property states that if we are having time shift at the input signal then if we take the z transform we can write that as z to the power of minus k multiplied with x of z so whatever time shift we are having the same value is taken at power of z and it is multiplied with the z transform for example if you are having n plus k so we'll be having z to the power of k x of z since we are having n minus k we can write z to the power of minus k x of z so to understand this let us take an example where input signal is given as 1 2 3 and for this if we perform the z transform we'll get 1 plus 2 z inverse plus 3 z to the power of minus 2 so taking z transform we have understood in our previous videos so here i have written the z transform directly now if this signal is shifted by 2 which means k is equal to 2 then x of n minus k will be x of n minus 2 so at that case we can shift this signal towards right side two divisions and the z transform of this signal will be using this equation we can write z to the power of minus 2 since k is equal to 2 here which is multiplied with z transform of the given signal so this is how we can perform the time shift operation on the signal so these properties are useful for analyzing the system with delays are advancing signals in time so to analyze the delay in the signal or advancement in the signal this property is very much helpful the next property is scaling in z domain so if we are having an input signal which is multiplied by a to the power of n if we perform the z transform we'll get x of a to the power of minus 1 z so as you can observe here if we scale the time domain signal by a to the power of n then x of z will also be scaled by the value a to the power of minus 1 so here we are taking an example if the signal is given as 1 2 3 3 and if we multiply some constant a to the power of n if it results in 1 4 9 9 the z transform of this signal will be 1 plus 4 z inverse plus 9 z to the power of minus 2 so these scaling in time domain are helpful in the system where signals grow or decay exponentially so wherever the signal will grow or decay exponentially this property is very much helpful next property is time reversal in place of x of n if we take x of minus n which means time reversal property is used here for this if we perform z transform we'll get x of 1 by z so here we have taken an example where 1 2 3 is given here the arrow mark is at 3 which means this is the value of x of n at n is equal to 0 this is the value of x of n at n is equal to minus 1 and this is the value of x of n at n is equal to minus 2 now if we apply time reversal operation on this so this value will remain at 0 so this value will move to 1 and this value will move to 2 so after time reversal operation 3 will remain at 
2 will be at n is equal to 1 and 1 will be at n is equal to 2. So, this is the equation after time reversal operation. For this, if we perform z transform, we will get 3 plus 2 z inverse plus z to the power of minus 2. So, this property is very much helpful in symmetry based analysis of signals and system. The next property is convolution property. So, convolution property states that if we take two signals, if we perform convolution on these two signals, if we perform z transform, the overall z transform will be multiplication of individual z transforms of the signal. So, as you can observe here, convolution in time domain will be multiplication in frequency domain, which means if you take convolution of these two signal and perform z transform, the result will be same as taking the z transform of x1 of n and z transform of x2 of n and multiplying those two signals. So, we have taken an example here. So, this is x1 of n, this is x2 of n. If we perform convolution on these two, we will get 1, 3 and 2. If we take z transform of this signal, so we will get 1 plus 3z inverse plus 2z to the power of minus 2. Now, if we take z transform of x1 of n, that will be 1 plus 2z inverse. And if we take z transform of x2 of n, that will be equal to x2 of z that is equal to 1 plus z inverse. Now, if you multiply these two signals, so we will get x1 of z into x2 of z that is equal to 1 plus 2z inverse into 1 plus z inverse. So, if you multiply these two signals, we will get 1 plus z inverse plus 2z inverse plus 2z to the power of minus 2. So, this we can write it as 1 plus 3z inverse plus 2 z to the power of minus 2. So, from this we understood that either you can go with direct convolution of these two and then perform the z transform on the signal or you can take z transform of individual signal then multiply both the z transform so that you can get the same answer. So, this is the convolution property. So, this property is helpful in analyzing the output of linear time invariant system. Next property is differentiation in z domain. So, here along with x of n, if we multiply n, then if we take the z transform, it will result in a differentiation of the z transform x of z. So, you can see here n x of n, if we perform z transform, the overall z transform will be equal to minus z multiplied with d divided by dz x of z. So, this property is useful in analyzing weighted sequence. Next property is initial value theorem. This property states that x of 0 will be equal to limit of z tends to infinity x of z. This property is helpful in analyzing the initial condition of the signal where we are finding x of 0. So, for that we can apply z tends to infinity for the z transform. For example, if you are having x of z is equal to 1 plus z inverse divided by 1 minus 0.5 z inverse. So, to find the initial value of the signal, we can apply limit z tends to infinity. So, if you apply limit z tends to infinity, these two values will tend to 0 and the x of 0 value will be equal to 1. Next theorem is final value theorem where we are determining the final value of the signal which means x of infinity that can be obtained by taking limit z tends to 1 for 1 minus z inverse into x of z. For example, if we are having x of z as z divided by z minus 0.5 then final value will be by taking limit z tends to 1. So, if you apply limit z tends to 1 in this equation we will get the value as 2. So, this is the final value of the signal x of n which is x of infinity. Next property is Parseval's theorem or Parseval's relation. So, this is the equation for Parseval's theorem. The left hand side represents the total energy of discrete time signal x of n for each sample of signal and its magnitude which is squared. The right hand side of this equation represents the total energy of the signal calculated in z domain or frequency domain. Here x of z is the z transform of the signal 
for which we are taking the magnitude and square. Here z inverse is the factor introduced due to property of z transform and integration with circle. It is known as contour integral around circular path magnitude of z is equal to r in complex z plane. This ensures the energy calculation considers all frequency in z domain. So here 1 divided by 2 pi j is the scaling factor for contour integral. So here you just remember this equation and statement so that it is helpful for your exam. This is the energy of the signal in time domain and this is the energy of the signal in frequency domain. So Parseval's theorem relates the time domain energy to z domain representation. So finally conclusion you need to remember z transform simplifies analysis of discrete time signal. The ROC provides insight into signal properties and stability. Properties like linearity and time shift makes computations efficient and these properties are used for applications in digital signal processing and system design. This is about properties of Z-transform. Hope you have understood the topic. Thank you.